restoring Illinois to greatness. This is Illinois Rising, presented by the Illinois Policy Institute and hosted by AM560's Dan Proft. Welcome back to Illinois Rising. I'm Pat Hughes. Dan Proft is taking the day off well-earned. He's the hardest working guy in politics and radio. Joining me is Brian Timponi, a dear friend of ours and a friend of the program. And Brian, sexual harassment in Springfield. I know you have two daughters, as do I. Uh, We are both fortunate to be married to women that are better than we are. We were graced in that way. And so I know that you take this issue uh, seriously, uh, being, uh, you know, in that circumstance with daughters and, you know, with your wife and I do as well. And this is really offensive, but not surprising. You used to be a reporter in Springfield. You were on Lee Daniels staff when he was the speaker of the house back in the mid nineties. What say you about the culture of Springfield, sexual harassment and what's being done? Well, I mean, the culture of Springfield has always been a cesspool. Uh, it's not really about legislating. It's, it's about socializing and, and you know the, the the reality is so few people who go to Springfield on the legislative side have any interest in actually doing anything. They don't read the bills. They don't pay attention. Uh, meander around the the House floor, and you know people are playing video games. You know, they used to smoke cigarettes, uh, reading books. Uh, so it's not surprising that when they leave, they want to go blow off some steam and they go out drinking, and one thing leads to another. So if you know, Springfield, if Springfield were more serious about the issues. We'd be better off as a state. Sexual harassment is one kind of byproduct of how I, uh, of what happens when you send legislators down there to be idle. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess my thought of it is, and I don't disagree with any of that, is the types of people that are attracted to go down there and not do anything are the same types. And I know I'm generalizing, so you know, I know I'm generalizing, but they're the same types of people whose moral code is not all it should be. And the real problem here is you've got you know. Uh, females down there who are uh, trying to get legislation passed, uh, uh, like Ms. Rodheimer, who was uh, who's accused a, a state senator of sexual harassment. You've got, um, you know, female uh, representatives and senators and people on their staff. And, and it's a work environment. And they're in a work environment, and then they're being placed in these, uh, you know, compromised posi- positions with people of power, whether it's their direct boss or otherwise. So forget about all the seedy stories about affairs and, disgusting stuff that we've heard over and over again, which we know exists, right? We could name names, but we won't, at least not on this program. We know that exists, right? I need to uh, point much further than when Ron Sandak had a, a, a pay-per-view with a girl in the Philippines, right? So we know this kind of stuff exists. The problem is it can exist. You can be voluntarily disgusting. You can be consensually disgusting and cheat on your wife and all the nonsense that goes on. But the sexual harassment part is where someone feels like their job is on the line if they don't comport with the advances of a superior, male, male, male or female, though I suspect it's mostly male, that's a different thing altogether, and it's gone unnoticed and untouched, and nothing's been done about it by Bruce Rauner, by Mike Madigan, by Jim Durkin over the last at least three years. Well, there's there are no consequences. Uh, yeah, there's no legislative for, inspector there's, general. There's no there are no consequences for people's actions. You know, the consequences used to come from the political leaders. A lot of people don't know that Richard uh, J. Daley was, uh, you know, very devout Catholic and. And, and, and demanded that his politicians, the people who were in his corner, were moral. If you cheated on your wife, uh, you were gone. Michael Madigan, of course, uh, really is a protege of old Mayor Daley. That's who, how he got started uh, back in the late 60s, early 70s. And I think he understands that. Today, these caucuses are out of control. And I think that one of the reasons why Madigan purposely, uh, in Durkin and Cullerton, didn't uh, staff that is because they know that, that there are uh, high-level state representatives and senators who are total dirtbags. They know who they are, and they want to protect them. Uh, uh, I know that, that there are members of House leadership that, that, that uh, on the Democratic side who've had accusations against them, and I'm sure that when Madigan uh, didn't staff it, he's protecting them because he realizes that there are great consequences to that for, his, for, for him politically, uh, and he doesn't want the consequences to reach his, his reps individually. Yeah, and I can't, I can't let Bruce Rauner off the hook here, and here's why. I don't care that he's not in the legislature. I don't care that he is someone who uh, is outside of that system, that the legislative inspector general would not be his sort of, you know, bailiwick and and his responsibility. But if you're going to be the leader of the state, you have the opportunity to call these people out and to let that position go unfilled while these complaints went for three years is on Ron or as much as it's on anyone else.